and today we are going to discuss about the <coughs> human rights evolution in stages so we are going to discuss the human rights evolution in stages one can identify the different stages in the development of human rights in the first stage there was a philosophical interpretation by social theorists for example the theory of the natural law by john locke states that man has natural rights and in this state of nature men are free and equal rousseau gave his social contract theory second stage is the one where it is slowly developed into the practice of enjoying rights demands for rights during the french revolution gave expression and birth of practice of rights the third stage is the form from 1948 when the universal declaration of human rights was adopted by the united nation making human rights as global rights the rights that were first demanded were civil and political rights therefore called the first generation rights the second generation rights covered the right to work income food health etc human rights instruments came in the form of treaties of resolutions these because of because the standards of judge the practice of human rights the universal declaration of human rights is one which important standard but with the emergence of the cold war and the rivalry between the usa and uss the development of human rights movement got derailed during the 1970 there was a progressive shift to right practices in 1980s several human rights several human rights organization between us <coughs> between usa and the against practices like discrimination against women against torture etc where institution lies from 1990 onwards the cold war having ended human rights have come to be center stages once again this trend is likely to continue with the more and more democratic countries emerging talking and the human relations practices more seriously and sincerely human rights global scenario human human rights occupy a very important position internationally on um, almost all countries respect the human rights and have incorporated human rights in their domestic reg- legislation however at the level of actual observation and practice there have been several instances of violations of human rights the amnesty international bring out every year large number of cases of human rights violations there were also organization like human rights watch which monitor the field of human rights and disseminate the information it is also pointed out that almost one fifth of the world population is reflected by poverty hunger disease literacy uncertainty insufficient ground for considering the economic and cultural social rights of this person are being denied on a massive scale yet on the whole development agencies have been sure to explore ways to bring this concern to the united nations human rights framework there have been many cases of genocide ethnic cleansing terrorism exploitation of women sectarian conflicts sectarian conflicts freedom of struggles in several countries like the yugoslavia comprising of serbia especially kosovo croatia slovenia bosnia herzegovina macedonia and rwanda east timor and other parts of the world and for a long time these instances have been violated human rights in large scale of underline the importance of the concert, concerted effort that need to be made to protect human rights further as time the passes with the greater awareness spreading the concept of ideas of human rights is getting serious attention and it can be hoped that in future human rights will be received due attention all over the world in the con- in this context the passing of the responsibility to protect the rt r2p affirms that states must adhere to protecting the rights of their citizen 
human rights in India. After the independence of 1947, India has supported supporters of human rights. The fundamental rights in India constitute assure the rights of equality, freedom against exploitation, freedom of religious, cultural, educational right, a right to constitution and remedies. There are several principles in the directive principles of state policy that offer guidelines to the government of policies to help poor women and marginalized section and the disadvantage India has a vibrant judiciary with the strong interlinked network of courts, high courts and supreme court. India has a long dealing with the human rights violation through an institution framework. The National Human Rights Commission was set up under the Human Rights Relation Act in 1993. It is the autonomous statutory body. It can acquire inquire into the human rights relations and violation include the public servant. It can be review constitution situatory international safeguards for the protection of human rights when it receives complaints of human rights of violation. It makes inquire and recommends to concern to concern the authorities for appropriate action like prosecution, grant, interim relief and referring to high courts and supreme court. There are also similar commission at the state level. There are also district court acting on human rights violation. 1992, the government set up national commission for the women. There is also national commission for minorities covering the Muslim, Christians and Buddhist, Sikhs and Jurastrians, etc. There is also extensive legal framework for women and children for protecting their rights. However, despite of various measures discussed above, when it comes into implementation of the record in the human rights front in India is not so good. We read about the reports of rights violation of women, children, minorities, Dalits, tribals and others. The record is also poor in the reporting of human rights violation when appropriate bodies and agencies as far as the judiciary is concerned. It is heavily overburdened with the spending cases. There are over 24 million cases pending in various courts in the country. There is also criticism that in judiciary, especially at lower courts, corruption is rampant. In the case of women with declining the sex ratio, more males, dowry, extortion, sexual harassment and domestic violence much more strong and serious action is to be undertaken. Similarly, child labor through declining is still significant. There are also still cases of bounded labor, exploitation of poor labor, there is a still in inadequate attention paid to unorganized labor who constitute over 90% of the total workforce. Indian record in ensuring the right to food, right to education, right to health have also not been impressive. It can be concluded that though there is a comprehensive human rights institutional framework in India, there is still a lot more to be done, especially in the sphere of implementation of the various provisions of human rights legislation and policies. So, my friends, if you like the video, share it and like it. And kindly push the bell icon button so you can get more videos. Thank you.